Hello and uh, welcome to the Career Changers. Our guest today is uh, Lucas Caneda, a career changer with a double career, global team lead at Unicorn Incubator and professional rugby player at Sarlat Rugby Club. It was exactly in Sarlat that Lucas met Dom Heinhorn, the founder and CEO of the Unicorn Incubator Accelerator and president of the Sarlat Rugby team. He immediately integrated the Incubator's Rugby program, where he now works as a team leader for both the Incubator as well as for one of his startup, Formation.gg, a platform dedicated to esports. Today, Lucas is going to talk about his double career and career change in the sport industry with the Career Changers. Hi, Lucas. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, Elisa. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you. So, um, well, we all start with, uh, um, we are very interested in knowing your story and we are curious to know something about your background. So, first of all, how did you start your professional life or better, what was your first job? So, I'm from Argentina. I've uh, been in the sports uh, industry for a long period of time. Uh, I had a dream when I was uh, a kid that was becoming a professional athlete, a professional rugby player in this case. Uh, back in Argentina, there were no professional clubs. So I knew and I was looking for to actually emigrate to some uh, other place, wherever that could be. Uh, my objective was France, since it's probably one of the best uh, professional championships uh, around the world. Finally got an opportunity when I was 25, uh, roughly five or six years ago. And uh, I grabbed it and I uh, fulfilled my dream of becoming a professional athlete. That was in 2015. And um, a couple of years afterwards, uh, I kind of felt that that was not enough. So I also wanted to do other things. I also wanted to develop myself on the business side a lot more than I was doing. I've, I've always been eager uh, into entrepreneurship, uh, into business investments. And that's how I became, uh, and I met Dom uh, that way through rugby, but also through business. And that's where I, I am today. So um, what was your dream job when you were a child? Was actually to be a rugby player or did you have anything else in mind? That's actually a question that many people ask me, but I, I don't really remember that much. I know when you're a kid, you always want to be a policeman or you always want to be a firefighter, and I don't an astronaut, but I don't really remember that much what I wanted to do. Just I knew that I wanted to do something, right? And I ever since I was a kid, I've always, you know, tried doing stuff. I remember back when the CD recorders came out, uh, I remember my granddad, he, he made a gift for me. I think it was for one of my birthdays. And instead of go, you know, buying a pair of shoes, I bought a CD recorder and I started uh, copying CDs for my friends and whatnot and created a business out of it. I was, I think it was 10, 11 years old. Uh, so, I, I mean... On the entrepreneur side, that's that's always been intrigued uh, by that. So yeah. yeah. So you had that side there when you were a child. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you remember the first time you played rugby at all? Yeah, I was a kid actually. It was I was five uh, when my mom took me for the first time. Um, I was, you know, pretty interesting because uh, uh, I like to do what the rest of my friends didn't. So when, when I was a kid, I was always looking for defense and usually always uh, the, the rest of the boys were always, you know, trying to catch the ball and whatnot. And I was uh, just trying to tackle people around. So it was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So you dedicated many of your years to rugby, uh, but what is your educational background? So back when I was in Argentina, I was studying uh, engineering. I did not finish my career because when I came to France, it was hard to continue. Um, 
while I was here, I'd studied uh, management. Uh, so yeah, that's where I basically come from. Mm. So do you remember um, any time uh, uh, when you were younger and or when you started to think, uh, I want to become a rugby player? Yes. Uh, so I remember, I was, let's say, between 17 and 19, 20, um, when things, let's say, became more uh, tough on the sports side. When you, and when you start to realize that there's a big need of dedicating yourself a lot more into getting trained, into eating properly, into recovering, uh, sleeping well, and where you start to need to, to, to make uh, different decisions into, well, should I go out with, with my friends tonight or should I rest because I have a game tomorrow? Uh, at that point in time, it became clear to me that I wanted to do everything I could to succeed playing rugby, even if I was playing at a whole amateur level at that stage. But I eat, sleep, and train like if I was a professional back then, because I knew that to get where I wanted to be, that's what I had to do. Mm. So how did you progress your career in rugby during the years uh, before suffering in 2014 what many thought would be a career ending knee injury? Well, I was slowly, let's say, becoming a better person first and foremost, but also a rugby player. So when, when you are under 19 i think it is you are not considered into the senior level yet so as soon as you turn 20 you go up into the senior team and the first year in i, I made made it to the first team and slowly after i became one of the uh, you know references out of the team um i was playing every game uh slowly started getting selected into different regional teams Back in 2013, uh, I played the National Sevens uh, with our province and we, we won champions. Uh, everything was looking very good in 2014 to get into the um, 15s, uh, so the actual rugby union mod modality, let's say. And... Uh, I was having a, a very good year back then. And then, as you said, I got a serious knee injury that took me away for the, it's, I think it was around September. So I missed the last three or four months of the season. Mm. So yeah, it was pretty tough, yeah. And few players before you have returned to the pitch post-surgery. Uh, but you not only did you return to ground your form, but also you were selected uh, in the Buenos Aires um, 20, no, 15, 15 squad <laughs> in 2015 and yeah. uh, won the Argentinian championship with your team. So yeah. where did you find the motivation and the strength to recover from your injuries and go back to the pitch? I think it's all about that passion, that fire inside you that drives you. Uh, into whatever you do. So what I always say is that I have a winning mentality, I call it, uh, where I just don't like to lose. Uh, no matter what I do, I always, I always want to win. And in that case, winning for me was overcoming adversity, uh, getting ready for what was coming, um, both mentally and physically in that case, because I was, of course, recovering for a from a serious injury and I needed to get ready. So I was willing to do whatever it takes to, to take me there. I think that winning mentality and that passion uh, to fulfill my dream was there to help me out. 
So when I was looking at your story, a little bit of your biography, I found it very interesting that at an early age, you were told that you had no um, shot at pro rugby due to your height. Mm. Um, so it's 175 in meters and 5'7". Um, so, um, yeah, I find it really interesting. But instead, in 2015, you actually moved to France with the intent to pursue your lifelong dream of becoming a professional rugby player. How did that go? Well, it's interesting because, as you said, whenever, ever, ever since I was a kid, they always told me that I was, I was too small to play professional rugby. But actually, I see that as a um, benefit because it just made me want to prove them wrong so hard that it just pushed me harder. <coughs> 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 Sorry. So some people would take that as a no and just threw the towel. In my case, luckily, uh, I just, okay, uh, I'm here to prove you wrong. I'm here to... Who are you to tell me that I cannot do this? Uh, and I mean, it worked out. Uh, of course, there's lots of efforts to get there. I'm, I'm pretty confident that nothing comes for free, that you need to do what it takes. Uh, in this case, was training, sleeping, eating properly. Um, but again, I mean, if you're willing to do it because you love it, because you are passionate about that, uh, it's a lot easier. Yeah, I find that very inspirational to not let anyone stop you uh, mm. reaching for your dreams, um, no matter what they say. Um, so during your career as a rugby player, have you ever thought about what to do next? Well, yes, actually, and that's why I, because I was playing professional rugby, uh, I did that and only that for one season. And after that, I decided that I wanted to keep studying. Uh, so I, while I was playing professionally, I think it was 2016, uh, 2017, around that time, I started studying back again. So I finished my management career. And after that, I was like, okay, what next? Because uh, that's always been who I am to uh, looking forward and trying to keep going, right? So um, that point in time, I decided that I wanted to keep playing professionally, but also that I wanted to be on the business side somehow. And that's why I, I found an option that it allows me to do both things at the same time. Um, which I think it's very challenging to being able to distinguish when you are on the pitch and when you're off the pitch. But also it's a very nice adventure because you are providing added value to the, to the rugby club on both sides of the coin in this case. So you are a part of what happens on the scores, on the games, but you're also part of the development of the of the company on the on the business side. That that's something that's very very intriguing, very challenging. And again, if, if you don't have a challenge or a dream to, to fulfill, it's I mean it's hard to, to go somewhere. So I think that's that, that's what keeps us all alive. Yeah, it's quite unique as well. Um, so is career change a topic that is discussed openly between rugby players? I think not enough, actually. It's good that you bring it up because I think most of the professional athletes, in this case, I know rugby players much more than the others, but I think it's you can, you can say pretty much it's all over. It just don't really focus about what happens next. Uh, or if they do, they do it too late. And um, it's not that I'm against professional careers, quite the opposite. But there's a lot more coming after, or maybe why not during that time? Because as a professional athlete, you, you do have time. And it's good to, to have, you know, to, to cut away from, from one 
uh, side and to put yourself to work mentally at least into something else. And the sooner you start developing uh, that career, um, it becomes easier. And one of the things I've discussed with a couple of friends the other day is that whenever you're facing your retirement, let's say, from a professional career, no matter what, what when that comes, because sometimes it comes at, at a later stage or it can happen that you, you, you might get a serious injury where you can not recover. And then what are you going to do next? Uh, if that happened to you uh, and you had nothing else that, uh, that drives you, what, what would you do? Uh, certainly it's very, very tough to, to react to that. So I, I do suggest and encourage people to, to try and do both things at the same time, somehow or to some extent. Um, the truth is that um, at least on rugby, um, financially speaking, uh, professional rugby players don't have their lives solved at the end of their career, quite the opposite. So why not start developing what's coming afterwards while you're playing, while you have time and, uh, you know, find what, what else you're passionate about. Cause I think at the end of the day that everything comes back to that. So you love rugby, uh, rugby, uh, you know, fills you up and allows you to keep going. Well, there, there should be something else that provides you with the same feeling that you can start developing and that you can, afterwards focus on um because it's pretty tough to go from uh a sport career where you love what you do and it's not really a job uh but it's your you know your dream and then if you go into a nine to five job regular job it might be pretty tough the the change but if you, in my case, for instance, I mean, I love what I'm doing on the business side. So it, it has become a lot easier on that front. Mm. Well, I don't really... know if that happened to you, maybe, <laughs> or not. I don't know. Well, I, I've not been playing rugby, but... <laughs> um, but but have you I found th your passion? Yeah, I think definitely when you, you know, when you feel passionate about something, it just yeah. comes natural to you. And you don't, you know, it's not about looking at the time or feeling like, oh, this is too late for this. You just have a natural interest. Yeah. And, uh, and it's like part of you. Um, and it's also really interesting to hear you talking about this topic because um, this is why the career changes like to cover um, um, this topic about the career change in sports because many times um, athletes suffer injuries and then they're not ready for the next stage of their life. Um, so we really think that there is, a, um, uh, there is a lot that needs to be said about uh, this topic and maybe uh, a lot that can be done as well to provide more support in the sport. I agree. Industry. Yeah, indeed. So in your experience, what are the biggest challenges of a career change in the sports industry? And uh, I mean, we cover a little bit of this, but do you think is there enough support out there or is there any support out there? I think it's not easy to find, that's true. But what I think that's most difficult, and it's not just for people playing sports, but I think it's a common, let's call it mistake of some sort, I think people usually um, fail to, fi to find that fire inside them that drives them into whatever they want to do. And coming from a professional athlete that loves what they do and that that's what drives them, whenever they got that down and what, whenever that's off the table, that's a real challenge because they they need to replace it with something else that, I mean, that they are passionate about it i think that's the key question i mean finding something else that you really love that you really enjoy that you wouldn't mind spending hours and hours doing it mm. i don't so, know if you have any other do you have any other yeah <laughs> do, you, do you think i mean what do you think about that question this that same question 
Yeah, I think I, I actually I find your answer very um, uh, interesting because uh, usually we, we talk a lot about uh, limiting beliefs or identifying actually which are your passion. Sometimes uh, the attention is put out, outwards, but actually we need to look inside to understand um, which direction we want to take. And yeah. um, many time uh, is an inner work. Um, there are ways to do that, um, but it's also probably uh, important to be aware um, of, you know, who are the right people that can support you to do that inner work. Sometimes it's not easy to do it by by by, by yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess sometimes it comes with age, sometimes it comes with experience, sometimes it comes with soul searching. Um, but definitely, like in the sporting industry, uh, like others, uh, other industry that we will be covered, like the military and the dance uh, industry, is more likely that people will end their career at an early age. Uh, so if they're not ready, uh, then they may have to deal with lots of feelings of uh, depression, insecurities, um, and and also is about identifying transferable skills. So what I've done until now, how can I use my skill in my next role? I think that's very interesting, actually, because uh, I've talked a lot about the um, skill set that gives you being a professional athlete that you can bring onto the business side. I think there's a lot of synergy into that end when it comes to motivation, when it comes to leadership, when it comes to overcoming adversity. I mean, that's things that we've learned through rugby. And at least in my case, I, I was ever since I was a kid, I was going through that. And that everything comes back to that, back, back on the business side. So whenever you, you are managing a team, you need to be able to identify uh, what motivates each of the members, uh, what drives them. And it's up to you to motivate, to, to lead them uh, into a good result um, and help them out to develop themselves, give them the responsibilities that they can handle, able, being able to delegate. And for that, you need to be, uh, you need to know them a lot better. And I think that comes, I mean, I've, I've seen that through rugby tons of times. And that's probably one of the areas I like the most on the business side is developing teams, uh, training them, uh, helping them to overcome adversity because that's what uh, I've been facing on the pitch for so long. So in Sarlat, you met uh, Dom Haynon, hopefully it's the right pronunciation. <laughs> uh, is it? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, it's actually Einhorn, yeah, but Einhorn, pretty, okay. pretty much. It's like, not like far. German. <laughs> yeah. yeah Ein Einhorn actually Einhorn. means unicorn in german oh really that's yeah. interesting yeah um so the founder and ceo of the unicorn incubator accelerator and president of the sala rugby team yeah. so how did meeting dom change your life and career well i was back in in the day when i was contacted by not by him but someone else at the club uh, I remember what my wife, she was like eight, eight months pregnant in and uh, we had this, you know, offer to come play rugby for the, for, for Sarla rugby. And um, we were not very, very sure about it because I was playing at a much higher level uh, in terms of divisions. And I was like, hmm, not really sure about that. Uh, so I discussed with my wife and we said, let's, let's go and meet them. Let's see what happens. So we just took the car, drive for four hours, get here, drove four hours back. Uh, but the good thing about that is that I met Dom. And I just, I mean, he's passionate about what he was trying to achieve with Unicorn and with Seller Rugby. That's what made me change my mind and made me decide instantly that I wanted to be with him, that I wanted to work with him, that I wanted to be a part of the team both on and off the pitch. And I wanted to be part of what I call uh, an adventure because what we are doing, what we're building, what we've achieved so far and what we want to achieve 
both uh, rugby wise and business wise. It's just, I, I might even say it's insane because it's so big. And um, yeah, I mean, that's why uh, it changed uh, my life. Yeah, why not? Mm. So how are you combining two different careers in your day-to-day -day life? It's a good one. Um, <laughs> I wish the days had more time, actually, because it is time-consuming, but I don't suffer from it because I love what I do. So it's just, it's not wasting time, but investing time. There's a big difference on that. Um, both on and off the pitch again uh, I might repeat that a hundred times but that's for me it's essential in what I'm doing it's being able to handle both sides uh, being an active participant on what happens at the rugby games at the trainings but also what happens developing the whole business side uh, of this story that we are creating together uh, so that makes everything easier, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we, we touched this a little bit earlier on, but um, maybe you have something else to add. What challenges did you have to overcome to transition from the sports industry, specifically from rugby to the business world, if any challenge? It all, it's always a challenge. Don't get, I mean, it's never easy to be, when you are used to, uh, training in the mornings, recovering in the afternoon. Uh, and from now on, well, you train in the mornings, you keep training in the mornings, but in the afternoon, you, you need to be at the office doing stuff. Um, it's never easy to, to accustom. But again, since I like so much what I'm doing, uh, I got used to pretty, pretty much immediately. And uh, I just, you know, I want to be at both places. Because there's so many things and challenging things that we are doing. Um, that ju it, it just drives you forward. So do you have any interesting, I'm sure you have, <laughs> a funny story to share from your careers? From uh, which one? Rugby-wise or business-wise? <laughs> <laughs> well, sure I think we have many. <laughs> Well, we've shared a couple, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, a funny story was when I was a kid, um, we were actually, um, I remember that I was playing rugby. I was also playing football or soccer. I don't know if you are from the States or not, just yeah, to make no. sure. <laughs> so. <okay. laughs> And I was also doing Taekwondo. So honestly speaking, I didn't have much time, right? And uh, so for one year, I was out of rugby for the whole season. Uh, I was young. I, I remember, let's say I was 10 years old. But at the end of the season, I remember my coach calling me. Um, Listen, at the end of the season, we are having this trip with the, with the team. Uh, to a different region. We're going to play against them. We're staying two nights over. Would you like to come? I was like shocked, right? Uh, how come you invite me? I I'm not a part of the team. Well, you'll always be a part of this team, he replied. I was uh, impressed, right? And uh, I think actually that's probably one of the reasons that I came back to rugby and I'm still playing because I went with them. I had a great, great time. And uh, I remember the first game that we played right out of nowhere. We had around 40 different players, only 15 go in. Uh, and out of nowhere, the coach puts me in the first team. It's like, I have not trained for the whole year. I have not seen any one of them. It's like, dude, you cannot do this to me, right? I mean, everyone's going to be jealous of you putting He just said, don't worry about them. Worry about playing yourself. I'll handle the others. It's like, come on, you're crazy. <laughs> so that's what we did. And he kept that team. So I played. 
And um, I remember at the end of the day, at the end of the, the day, uh, everyone was telling me, you, you cannot leave again. You should stay here. Right. Oh. And I, was, I was impressed. Right. But that feeling of, for me, um, of belonging, that phrase that he said to me, you will always belong to this team. I mean, that's, that shows a lot about what rugby is because mm. it's more than just a game. It's more than just a club or a sport. It's about a family that we create whenever we are inside. And that's probably the message I, I would like to, to tell with the story. That's a lovely story. Um, so while well, you've been sharing your experience and, uh, and now is the time to give uh, some, to use some of your wisdom uh, to give some tips to our listeners. Um, so what type of advice would you give uh, to anyone along their path to self-realization? I would do probably a, a cliche one, but follow your dreams. Uh, that's what brought me here. That's what I really believe in. Uh, if that, I mean, that fire inside you that drives you it comes from fulfilling your dreams so don't be afraid of doing it just giving it all to make it happen mm -hmm. and what advice would you give to sports people looking to change their careers to begin that's probably the most difficult part um to think outside the box to step away what we call the comfort zone. So yes, of course, being a professional athlete, it's encouraging, it's self-fulfilling, it's very happy indeed. But there's no reason why we shouldn't be doing something else at the same time. Uh, we have the time, that's a reality. And uh, let's take advantage of that time and start by doing something, whatever that is. You can go study, you can go learn a different language, you can build your own business, you can start working as a freelancer. There's tons of stuff to do around. So the last question now, so you overcome many challenges in your career, um, external obstacles, people telling you, well, you cannot play rugby because you're not cool enough, uh, injuries, but if you, but you have overcome all of that, but if you look back, what sort of advice would you give to your younger self? I would tell myself to keep doing what you're doing because you're on the right track. Even though I say almost every time believe that it's always good to remember that what you're doing it's worth it because it's not easy sometimes uh i'm not gonna say that i've never wanted to quit uh because that's that wouldn't be true uh sometimes i mean you, you want to throw the towel as everyone else you get disappointed or frustrated but yeah i would say keep pushing well, thank you very much, um, Lucas, for joining us today and sharing your inspirational career change story. And uh, thank, you. thank you. A last message for our listeners. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and tune in next week for a new inspirational episode of The Career Changer. Thank you again. Thank you, Lisa. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks.